create everything. All right, guys, we're back in Make a Website Building with Bootstrap. I'm excited that they're going to be having us use Bootstrap. It's a great, free, responsive design, CSS styling that is really used quite a bit. So there's only eight slides of Bootstrap, but there's a ton of stuff you can do in here. So if you have the projects, I, I encourage you to go ahead and check those out. So the first thing we're doing here, nav our items do not change position. Click on the arrows. The toggle, so it wants us to refresh. All right, now we'll connect to Bootstrap and see how the changes affect the website. So this is pre-Bootstrap. Lots of, uh, let's see what's going on here. So this is pre-Bootstrap. Now we want to see what's going to happen when we add the Bootstrap uh, style sheet. So we'll just go ahead and copy this over. And we can put that like so. Now let's run it. And you'll see that the buttons are there now. They have an active over them. The, this is to the right. This is down below and it's kind of organized. So it did a little bit of stuff to it. So the way Bootstrap works when talking about the grid system is they have columns and rows. So this top part is a row and it has two columns with saying if the small pixels and it's taking, basically it's a, a set of 12 so you can always break it up into 12. You don't have to but that's kind of how it works. So while these two six sets work it'll be in one row but once the pixels don't work or whatever the case may be it's going to drop down under it and kind of just keep on working itself around into the best most responsive design which is really needed just because of all the devices people are on nowadays not just desktops most people spend most of their time on their phones now so let's see here first thing we're gonna do is create this header within the body now this is gonna create a class container so Trying to remember what the difference is here. Containers kind of like your default bootstrap div. Um, so that I mean that's really how how to think of it anyhow. That's kind of it does have some it does have some some class attributes I think. It's been a while since I've looked at the documentation, but just think of it as a uh, general div. So, all right, uh, I talked about the rows. So you're going to create a row. So essentially what you're doing is creating a class and then assigning it to row, which is a predetermined div class. Oops. And I do that all the time. So we go ahead with that. So we've created our row, and now we want to create our column. So. So this is H1, and we're calling it skill fair. Close the H1. All right, cool. We can go ahead and run this, but it's not done yet. So, But you'll see it's an H1 display. But now what do we want to do? With this H1, we want to give it a class equal to, and you can do this for almost any sort of uh, HTML element. Select the class, and then we'll just go ahead and run that. Cool. So. It doesn't look like too much has changed because we haven't assigned any. There's, it's only the one item. So, the next thing we want to do is create a nav class. I'm just going to copy and paste this in here to save time. And you'll notice that we're doing this in the same row here. So, let's go ahead and create a nav class. There's not actually anything in it. And then we're going to create three p tags, which are going to be kind of like our menu. So, Notice that we're throwing it within the nav because we wanted to inherit that. I'm going to run that. So it's looking pretty nice so far. So far, so good. So uh, it's going to go on about a new section on it called Jumbotron. So go ahead and read this. In this case, we're just going to use what they call a section class. I don't remember what the difference between a section and a div is, 
but definitely check out this documentation if you're if that's something you're interested in I'm sure there's got to be some sort of difference um, I just have never even seen section like this so uh, you know uh, below the header tag alright so we're gonna create another group here just go ahead and run that and in our jumbotron it looks like there is a default image so you see our jumbotron class here already has a background image and URL so you'll notice that it has some some uh, background size dash cover so you'll see the image expanding things of that nature so we're gonna go ahead and throw a div class container within our jumbotron because it's a class and not an ID we can reuse it without any issues alright so in this case we're just gonna create a row so uh, you'll see that we're combining two classes so not only are we creating a row we're also calling upon the class text center so this is gonna center things you're not gonna really notice it because there's nothing in here yet it's just the one image but we'll, we'll probably get a good look at it right now so in our row text center we're gonna have h2 and it's just gonna be homemade goods slash h2 and then we have h3 and that's gonna be this year's best slash h3 and we're even going to add a button oh no excuse me a anchor tag that's going to be styled like a button so notice we're going to give it the BTN class and then BTN primary so there's like various button classes primary I believe is blue by default then we're going to sign the uh, URL or the href and we're just going to make it a hashtag here it's not going to actually go to anything and then we're just going to give it a role equal to button and then of course we want to put the text in so we can see see all and slash a now let's go ahead and run this and you'll notice everything is center our our anchor tag is styled like a button but it's not actually a button it's just a it's a URL uh, it's just a URL that's been kind of styled to look that way but for all intents and purposes it's pretty much the same thing so we're slowly moving on here let's see where do they want to sell with this all right create a new section here go ahead and get rid of these dots run our code very nice so in the interest of time we're gonna go ahead and just copy this over so we're just creating two rows here again remember uh, rows go left to right or right to left however you look at columns go up and down so I find this as crazy as it sounds to be kind of a non-intuitive thing when thinking about how images resize so columns fill up the rows like this and take up a certain amount of space of the row so it doesn't necessarily matter how tall it is but it matters how wide the column is within that row just something to think about all right just go ahead and run that very nice so uh figure what is figure I was like tell us what figure class is I have not heard that I have to look this up after this is very interesting okay so in the interest of time we're just gonna go ahead and copy pasta that in Ooh, it looks like I may have made a mistake so we're gonna have to copy pasta one at a time figure class hmm this is why I love doing these things man you learn something every single time finally each figure add to it elements P we have a kitchen for example okay so in this case they just want to set a P tag and then they want us to add an image so 
if you forgot how to add an image, it's just img src equals put the URL in there. Now we can go ahead and run that and see what's going on here. So you'll see our little kitchen. We're not done yet though. So then we'll do woodwork. Oops, excuse me. So we're gonna create a p tag. Woodwork slash p and then our second image here. Oh, IMG SRC equals All right, we can run this just to see, make sure everything seems to be working. And then we'll get this other one. And this one was supposed to be gifts. Gifts. Like a gift with a T and not a GIF. Uh, I don't know why I had to elaborate on that. that. Slash P. And then we'll do image SRC equals so you're seeing really relatively quickly how you can create and have all this great content just with a few images a couple rows and a couple columns that's kind of why I personally like bootstrap as much as I do so here we go antiques if you're like me you forgot to put the p tag completely slash p and then you also forgot that you had to type the image tag. It's been a long day, guys. I apologize if I'm kind of uh, making little little tiny mistakes like that. All right. So now let's look at what we got here. You'll see that everything's kind of nicely organized. So why is that? Well, it has to do with our rows. So in our row, we'll always have two images unless things get too small like they are now. So at some point these images resize now as we continue going out you'll see right there so at this point it's gonna be okay with the small slash six so I said alright cool this is this we need a certain amount of room before we resize these and you'll notice they're never actually gonna go on top because they're always gonna take six each of the twelve rows alright so let's let's move on So last but not least, we are going to create a footer class. So uh, as you can probably imagine, our footer class here is going to be the footer of our page at the bottom. We're going to put another div class row in there. So there's ton. I really suggest checking out the CSS and JavaScript that uh, Bootstrap has to offer. And this time we're going to create yeah, they don't have to be even. So, so far we've done a lot of, oh, everything's been even. That's not the case. So you can have, you know, one with four columns and one with eight. And that will work just fine because it will add up to 12. Cool. And then, so we want to add this. So this is, I forget, it's a character code. Thank you, free code camp. Uh, or, uh, excuse me, um, code Academy. I get all these places mixed up. Alright, so we're going to put this in here. We're going to go ahead and run it, and then we're going to expand it out. And so you'll notice that this is all the way to the left, lined up perfectly with this, taking up just the four columns. And are we doing something to the right? Alright, it looks like we're going to be creating a ton of uh, list items. So in here, I imagine that we are going to these are going to be just just like about me contact that's how I imagine it anyhow we'll find out in a second so we'll go ahead and run that alright so oh, okay or, or our social media that makes sense too so we'll go ahead and put this in here So in this case, we're just going to put our little social media icon. Very nice. And then you'll notice how there's no backslash. I believe in HTML4 you had to put a backslash on the image tag. I don't think you have to do an HTML5. So you also notice that these are SVG files. So why is that important? So SVG file type, unlike PNG or JPEG, expands. That's uh, 
what's the word I'm looking for? It is vector art. So vector art has the ability to expand because it's based off mathematics. So just something to think about. Definitely a cool thing that you can't make every image vector art, but uh, you know logos and things that are very simplified, such as like an F Facebook logo, logo or something like that. You know, taking the time to do it. Not too shabby. So you'll notice right here, there they are, and then you'll notice they're actually to the right as well. So it's not too bad. Pretty nice logo. Cool. And I think that's pretty much it. That's kind of a quick rundown of Bootstrap. So I highly suggest learning Bootstrap very well because even if you don't use Bootstrap, you're going to need to understand the principles behind responsive design. So kind of check it out. It's free. Uh, you just have to make sure that you link to it in your HTML. And hopefully I'll be doing the project sometime soon, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I hope to see you next time. Thanks.